What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Full 90 and today it is time for week 25 of the Premier League predictions and I want to give a massive shout out to Azan Umran who left his predictions on the previous week as well as answering the comment question which was in your opinion who is the most underrated player and he said his was Yuri Tillemans which I thought was a really really good answer so if you want to be in with a chance to be featured in the next episode of the Premier League predictions then drop your predictions down below for week 25 and answer me this because I'm very intrigued because it's getting very very close at the bottom of the table who do you think are going to be the three teams that get relegated from the Premier League this season I think in my opinion at least I don't want to influence you guys too much but I feel like Norwich is kind of a given at this point but I feel like they're the only ones that are pretty much certain to go down so let me know who you think is going to get relegated down in the comments along with your predictions before we get into week 25 let's have a little look back at week 24 and also there was the game between West Ham and Liverpool from week 18 that got postponed and that match hasn't been played at the time of recording but by the time this is uploaded you guys will know the results so my prediction for that is 3-0 to Liverpool but I have no idea how that ended uh, but week 24 wasn't the best week uh, but anyway we started off we had Aston Villa versus Watford. I predicted a 2-1 away win to Watford. It was a 2-1 home win to Villa. So I got that one wrong, the wrong way around. The next game, Bournemouth v Brighton. I predicted a 1-0 away win to Brighton. It was a 3-1 win to Bournemouth. Finally, it clicked for Bournemouth, making again that relegation dogfight much more interesting, hence the common question of the week this week. Crystal Palace Southampton, I predicted a 1-1 draw and Southampton beat them quite comfortably 2-0 away from home. Everton Newcastle, I predicted a 2-1 win to Everton and it looked like Everton were breezing to a win but two late overtime or stoppage time goals, I should say, from Newcastle meant that it ended in 2-2. Sheffield United, Man City, I, I did think Man City were actually going to be able to finally take apart uh, Sheffield United's defence a bit and it still didn't happen. I predicted a 3-1 win to Man City. It was a 1-0 win. Chelsea-Arsenal, I almost got it right. I predicted a 3-2 win to Chelsea and it was a 2-2 draw. Arsenal credit to them playing the majority of the game with 10 men they did very very well to get a point from that uh, point from that game Leicester v West Ham I predicted a 2-1 win to Leicester it was a 4-1 win to Leicester so they're finally finding their stride again Man United Burnley I predicted a 1-0 win to United it was a 2-0 win to Burnley which is hilarious because United played I say they played well they didn't take their chances but they were looking like the team that was going to win for at least the first half an hour and they just couldn't take the chance Tottenham v Norwich I did just skip over I predicted a 2-0 win to Tottenham it was a 2-1 win so very close there and Wolves v Liverpool right I predicted a 1-1 draw and a few people had a go at me in the comments for even suggesting that Liverpool could drop points at Molyneux but in my in my defense I, I watched the game and I feel like a draw could have been a fair result. In the end, Liverpool, I guess, deserved to win because they scored more goals. That's how football works, obviously. Uh, but that performance from Wolves is probably one of the best performances against Liverpool this season. So I don't think it was too out of the ordinary uh, to predict a draw, given the performance there. And uh, also, a lot of people in the comments of the previous video, it was the most common comment that I got saying that Adama Traore was the most underrated player and whilst I agree he's an absolute beast he was trending on Twitter worldwide as like you know being an insane player and is he now underrated or is he just sort of fairly rated because underrated sort of implies that they've got all this talent but no one's talking about it but the thing is with Adama Traore everyone's talking about it now so whilst I think he was underrated I would say now he's just fairly rated you know everyone sees his potential so that's that's why I, I stayed away from picking those comments for this video but anyway kicking it off for week 25 we have Leicester up against Chelsea Chelsea are so hard to predict I've just been looking through their recent results you know they draw to Arsenal then they lose to Newcastle they beat Burnley comfortably but then they lose to Southampton so it's very difficult to predict Chelsea's games and uh, Leicester I think they will be buoyed by their performance against West Ham it could have been more than four goals that they scored they played very very well I'm going to go for a draw in this one because I, I'm really struggling. I was going to go for a Leicester win. I think if I had to pick a winner between the two teams, I would actually go with Leicester in this one because Chelsea are so hit and miss lately. But I think it's going to be high scoring because it's at the King Power Stadium. There tends to be more goals there. Leicester loving going on the front foot there. But I think Chelsea will be able to get a couple of goals. I'm going to go for a 2-2 draw. 2-2. But if I had to predict predict a winner I'd probably go Leicester the next game at Bournemouth versus Aston Villa this is a huge relegation six pointer I don't know who to pick because Bournemouth up until last week were in dreadful form but they bagged three goals Aston Villa up until last week were in dreadful form but then they scored two goals against Watford I think if this was uh, uh, Aston Villa's ground I would probably go with a Villa win because Bournemouth don't travel particularly well but at home Bournemouth showed they can do it they are capable of beating Brighton three goals to one so I'm gonna go for a 1-1 draw. You thought 
You thought I was going for a Bournemouth win there for a second, but I'm going for a 1-1 draw. The next game is Crystal Palace up against Sheffield United. Sheffield United, resilient performance up against Manchester City, and they potentially could have got something from that game if they took, you know, the, the slight half chances uh, that they had. And uh, Crystal Palace losing 2-0 at home to Southampton, which, you know, is not the best result, especially coming off of a draw against Manchester City. It just seems that Palace get up for Man City more so than any other game and any other team. And I think Sheffield United, with their really good away form and their solid defence and Crystal Palace compacted defence as well, I think it's going to be a low-scoring win to Sheffield United. So I'm going to go for a 1-0 away win. The next game is Liverpool up against Southampton. Now, initially, I was thinking maybe a 2-0 win to Liverpool uh, or maybe even a 3-0 win to Liverpool because their record at Anfield is absolutely ridiculous. But then Southampton have been playing very, very well lately uh, and they have scored the odd goal against Liverpool in the past. Uh, so I'm going to go for a 3-1 win to Liverpool in this fixture. The next game is Newcastle up against Norwich. Now, Norwich, you know, they're at the bottom of the league. They're six points behind everybody else. Uh, and I just, I don't see them going to St. James's Park and getting anything here because Newcastle's home form is actually pretty good. Uh, they came back against Everton, which was just unreal. And obviously the week before that, they beat Chelsea. So Newcastle are in high spirits. And I think there's no better game to play. Like I said, when Man United played Norwich at Old Trafford and they beat them like 4-1 in the end, there's no better way to continue a run of good form or get yourself out of a run of poor form than playing Norwich at your home ground when your home form is something that you rely on. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 win to Newcastle over Norwich. Now the next game is Watford up against Everton. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit tricky to predict, but I think Everton should have enough in this fixture away from home. Watford uh, going up in the lead against Aston Villa and then losing it at the end. So they're playing all right. They did get eliminated by Tranmere in the FA Cup in extra time. I know they didn't play a full-strength squad because they've got so many fixtures that they've had to deal with thanks to throwing a 3-0 lead in the FA Cup. Uh, but now they can focus on the Premier League and the Premier League alone. So I think it's going to be a close game. But I'm just going to give Everton the edge. They should be more rested and more up for this game. And on paper, they are a better team in my opinion. So I'm going to go for a 2-1 away win to Everton, which is going to be an exciting game to watch. The next one, West Ham up against Brighton. Another relegation fixture and another relegation fixture that I think is going to end in a stalemate because I just can't see any of the teams winning this. West Ham looked pretty dreadful. Brighton away from home aren't great and they just got slapped by Bournemouth, also in the relegation dogfight. So again, I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw to keep this relegation battle on and exciting. And obviously Liverpool have won the league at this point. So the exciting things really for this year are going to be the relegation battle, which is very much on, but also the battle for top four because every time Chelsea get a chance to really pull away from the pack, I feel like Man, United, uh, Man City, Liverpool and Leicester are the cemented top three. Every time Chelsea get a chance to pull away, they bottle it. So it's going to be very interesting, the top four and the, and the, the bottom three fight. Uh, but West Ham Brighton 1-1. One, one. Speaking of the top four fight, the next game, Manchester United up against Wolves. Now, Wolves, they had a fantastic performance up against Liverpool. And if only they were slightly more clinical, they could have easily got a point and something from that game. And Manchester United looked woeful against Burnley after the first half an hour. And that's the weird thing. Man United have this weird thing where they come out in the second half looking worse somehow. You'd think the manager would, you know just give them a hammering and be like, oi, sort it out. It's almost as if he doesn't do that. And they had no answers to Burnley's questions in the second half. Wolves, on the other hand, played really well against Liverpool. And one of the commentators actually said it. It looked like a battle between first and second, the Liverpool-Wolves game, as opposed to first and seventh. And you know what? Man United, after losing to Burnley, all out of shape. McTominay, Pogba, Rashford, all injured. I think at this point, I'm going to go for a Wolves win. Away win to Wolves, 1-0. Because the games between Man United and Wolves are typically quite low scoring as well. The next game is Burnley up against Arsenal. Now Burnley doing very well to beat Manchester United 2-0. Can they beat two of the big six back to back? And if you include Leicester in that, even though they're not the, you know, the usual traditional big six... Can they get three wins from three out of those games? I don't think so. I was originally going to go for a draw, but I thought I'd look at the head-to-head -head record between Burnley and Arsenal. And Arsenal have won all of the last 11 times the teams have met in all competitions, which is a phenomenal record. Burnley just aren't great against Arsenal. So even though Aubameyang is out, David Luiz will be out because of his red card now that I think about it. So I don't know what they're going to chop and change at the back. Mustafi's probably going to make an appearance and it's his fault that the red card happened, really. 
I'm going to go for an away win to Arsenal. 2-1. I, I know that's probably quite risky. I know Arsenal are slightly weakened, but surely Burnley can't take nine points against Leicester, United and Arsenal. I don't know. I just feel like Burnley and Arsenal's head-to-head -head record is so much so that Arsenal are, you know, dominant over Burnley. I'm going to go for a win. But my initial reaction was a draw. But let's back the boys. The final game, Tottenham up against Manchester City. This one should be quite straightforward in my opinion. I think Tottenham will get a goal. They're, they're a decent team, but that's as far as I'd go for them this season. You know, they're all right. You know, they're not amazing. And they do leak goals uh, under Jose Mourinho. It has to be said, you know, they conceded a goal to Norwich. I know it was a penalty, but still. And uh, they could have easily conceded to Watford and lost that game the week prior. I think Manchester City are going to win this one comfortably enough three goals to one. So that is going to do it for the week 25 Premier League predictions. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe so you don't miss another video. We've got the Champions League knockout stages coming up very, very soon, which is, which is exciting. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video very soon.